We're talking about Vance Phillips. He's been in office for close to two decades. This year, there's some real competition. Now, just by the sheer number of cars that are passing by, you can see right away how busy this road is. By that time, they expect to see 82 centimeters. What's that mean in feet? It means not one, not two, but two feet and eight inches by 2100. It used to be that Labor Day meant the end of tourism. Now October is huge, and that's why people here say that they don't want to see any construction until the tourists are long gone. This small white building on Route 1 may not look like much as you pass by, but it has been a haven for homeless people in the Rehoboth Beach area. Soon this plot of land could change. If you walk with me here, you're taking a look at Hart's Landing. It's a development adjacent to it, and soon the plot of land could look a little bit like this. The area in question is in Milford, where Route 14 meets Route 30. And take a look down below from Chopper 16, you are looking at that roadway, which is better known as Route 1. Now, when you look at the numbers, there's no question as to why many people are turning to scooters like this one. This one gets 110 miles per gallon. Some of them get as high as 140 miles per gallon. On top of that, they're actually pretty fun as well. They say action must be done quickly and immediately in order to stay in compliance. Sabrina. All right, Evan, so what about other schools? Because this issue, it could go beyond Cape, right? Yeah, it really does. I mean, nationwide and here on Delmarva, you see it. You see these prayers happening all the time before the games. In Dewey Beach, this is Evan Kozlov with your Delmarva News Bite. We've all heard of food and coffee to go, but what about jail cells? It's been a very emotional day here in Sussex County, in particular here in the Rehoboth Beach, Dewey Beach area. That's because he lived here behind me in the Silver Lake uh, area right in Dewey Beach. And I spoke to literally dozens of people all of them said that he was loved in this area. The emotion is resonating here in Ellendale as well, where the accident happened. If you take a look right here at this lawn on North Old State Road, you'll see the mark of where the car was traveling before it hit these trees behind me where Christina lost her life. The goal of getting iPads like this one in the hands of every student is to try to get the kids more involved with the digital world. Take a look at this app right here, Schoology. It's one of the main apps they're going to use. First thing you might notice, it looks a little bit like Facebook. This is what you call punching the cap. Essentially, it puts the skins at the bottom of the barrel. It adds oxygen to the wine and also releases more flavors. What this new partnership is all about is allowing more people to try this wine. But one obstacle that the town is facing is that in this small strip, many of the businesses are bars and many people, especially young people, say that that's the reason they come here in the first place. Is this a party town? Definitely. But there is another side to those DUI numbers, namely its enforcement. Last year, between July and December, the Office of Highway Safety had 30 checkpoints for DUIs. This year, so far, there's only been nine. At the memorial in D.C., there were former press secretaries, reporters, friends, colleagues, even Vice President Joe Biden. All of them said a very similar thing. They said that he, Brady was fearless, he was brave, and that his personality filled up the room. Such incredible passion, a rage born out of love. For Vice President Joe Biden, as with countless other speakers, the emotions were high Friday morning. At the museum in Washington, they remembered their dear friend, James Brady. The bullet of that would-be assassin left him robbed of so many of his faculties and as so many other victims of gun violence, but it didn't uh, rob him of his voice. But Brady's passing has many local ties as well. He lived right here on Silver Lake in the Dewey Beach area, and many close friends say they remember him for his charm and big personality. And I spent a lot of time right here on these decks. Uh, if you can imagine a small town mayor getting advice from a uh, presidential press secretary. That's Bob Frederick, former mayor of Dewey Beach and a longtime friend of Brady. He says there are countless words for his friend, fearless, kind, and just plain funny. One of my favorite stories is, and I think the rumor is still alive today, but uh, Jim would call from this house and get a pizza delivered. And of course, when they would always end it and ask what your name is, he would say Cal Ripken. And to this day, I think people still think Cal Ripken was somewhere up here, <laughs> which I don't think he ever was. Jim was a very uh, gregarious man. And this love and admiration was shared by neighbor Sandra Smith. Despite Brady's debilitating injury, she says he was never bitter. He never complained. He was a person who uh, was very positive and optimistic, and you would never have known that anything had ever happened to him. And that's why I, I think he was a lesson to us all. He cared too much. From Washington to Delmarva, Brady is gone but not forgotten.
Now, in the 30 years since he's been shot, he and his wife were advocates for gun control, so much so that his work led to a federal law requiring background checks on all handgun buyers. That now bears his name. In the Sussex County Bureau, this is Evan Kozloff for WVOC News. Back to you guys. Evan Kozloff, thank you. Those two words are look again. It's a very simple message. But her father says it's a message that could have saved her life. And if you take a look over here, you'll see the memorial. Obviously, it's full of flowers and messages of love. Now, the accident was close to three years ago, but her father says that the wounds are still very fresh. And Brielle could care less. Nils Milford can't help but tear up as he looks at photos of his daughter. Uh, my emotion is love. I miss, I miss, uh, I miss my little girl. Their happy memories, moments stitched in his mind forever. On November 23, 2011, though, a more painful memory comes to mind. His daughter, Alexis Brielle Mulford, 16 at the time, was killed at this Seaford intersection, hit by a car in her blind spot. I've got a doctor that's telling me that you, you just need to sit down. You need to sit down. And I told her, no, I need to see my daughter. Just. Just tell me where my daughter is. And uh, she says, your daughter didn't make it. At first, Mulford says he was lost. He was looking for meaning in her death. Then one day in Salisbury, he says he found the sign he was looking for. And as I start to go across the intersection there, I see this look again sign. And I'm like, this is a sign from my daughter. So Mulford made some calls. He found out that these signs are all over Maryland, but in Delaware, they are rare. For two years, he fought for them. He spoke to county leaders, state lawmakers, and even Del Dot, anyone who would listen to his plea. And then, after two years, it happened. Six signs just like this are now posted at the intersection where his daughter had lost her life. The only thing we ask is parents is that they get a fair chance. This sign, this sign gives kids a very inexpensive fair chance. Two words Milford hopes can help save lives. Now back out here at the memorial, Mil Milford says that these signs are more than just a tribute. In fact, he says they've led to an accident rate decrease at dangerous intersections in Maryland of about 40%. Now he hopes to bring that here to Delaware. Sussex County, this is Evan Kozloff for WBOC News. Back to you guys. Judge Stokes in Sussex County will have quite a big decision ahead of him in the next couple of months, and it all has to do with this plant right here. I'm sure you could see the iconic Velastic Pickle logo. Now many neighbors are fighting to make sure that the Allen Harim logo doesn't come here. Jay Myers pushing on 35 years, living in a picturesque home on the Indian River. And sometimes he likes to just sit, sit and admire the Indian River. Oh, it's a heartbreaker. It's a heartbreaker to know that everything he worked so hard for is about to be destroyed. He's talking about a legal battle that he's led for the past couple years. Just a block away from his home is the plant in question. Denrek has given Alan Harim the green light to set up shop inside this building and to start dumping in the Indian River. Meyer says that this would be a problem. 12 million gallons of wastewater every week for the next 30 years, why would they allow something to be dumped in a river like that for the next 30 years? But the appeals board disagreed. They referenced a 5,000 page report from a consulting company which outlined every step of the remediation process. That report said that there would be a limited environmental impact on the waterway. I feel pretty good about what they're promising. And many like Millsboro Mayor Bob Bryan say the offer is just too good to turn away. WBOC reached out to Alan Harim which tells us that the company already employs 1,000 Delawareans. They say they hope to add 700 new jobs with this plan. Think about 700 people that will get a paycheck every Friday. But in court documents, protecting our Indian River said that the board's decision was biased, calling it arbitrary, capricious, an abuse of discretion, contrary to law, and not supported by substantial evidence. It's not going to affect the river. Years in the making, debate continues in Millsboro. Now, this legal dispute is far from over. I have right here the appeal right here. This is the appeal that they filed. And here's what's next. Attorneys from both sides will have the opportunity to submit a written argument. Then the judge will have 90 days to make a decision.
In Sussex County, this is Evan Kozloff for WBOC News in Millsboro. Massive. We're talking about 114 acres. And take a look down below here from Chopper 16. You're getting a look at exactly what it's going to look like. Obviously, you can see it's a massive chunk of land. The main question that neighbors have is whether Route 1 can handle any more traffic. Terry August is busy keeping his Milton home in tip-top shape. He lives in this neighborhood, the Red Fox Run development. And down the road is this, farmland on Route 1, which is the proposed site for a new mega shopping center. August says the center would mean more traffic woes. It takes us forever just to get out of our subdivision during high season. It's not going to get any better definitely going to get worse. Where are the people going to come from? To That's a sentiment work? understood by George Barty, who lives in the same development. He says he'd consider moving if the center came to town. The fear is that we may have to move out of here sooner than I thought, because it's, the traffic is going to be unbearable. And just to put perspective what this 114 acres will look like, if you combined all the Tanger outlets together, it would equal about half the size of this lot. But for some, like Terry Conroy of Lewis, the prospect is not only acceptable, but exciting. That goes back to this whole, not in my backyard, uh, mentality that a lot of people have. They don't, they only see it through their own prism. They don't see it through the prism of the whole area. Also of Lewis, Abby Firestein says that she too is on board with the shopping center, adding it's all about location. I think in this area, the development in terms of commercial development should be limited to the area where there's already commercial development, meaning Route 1. A mix of opinions over the future of this land. And back up here in Chopper 16, don't be surprised to hear a lot more about this development over the next couple years. The first planning and zoning public hearing on this issue will be on October 9th, and this could mean the start of years of debate here in Sussex County. In Chopper 16, this is Evan Kozlov for WBOC News. Back to you guys. The debate lasted close to an hour, and each of the candidates answered six questions. The central focus to all of it is whether incumbent Vance Phillips is right for the job. No matter what I say, too much. Here they are, the four candidates for District 5, gathering here at the Sussex County Bureau to face off in a debate. Incumbent well, Vance Phillips has been in office for 16 years, and he says he's been an advocate for small government and low taxes. We would expect all the candidates to say that jobs is the number one issue, but I'm going to suggest that maybe there's something behind that problem. I call it liberal creep. The liberals have taken over Washington, D.C., and they're primarily on the Democrat side. Phillips faces an impending civil lawsuit in February where he's accused of sexual wrongdoing by a female intern. Continue on the West. Republican challenger Rob Arlette did not reference the lawsuit at the debate, but said Vance's office lacked integrity and leadership. I believe beyond the vote, the question is what's most important for the Councilmatic 5 district. I think it's who you're voting for. I, I believe we need much better public officials than what we've had, specifically within Councilmatic 5. We have to start doing something. Meanwhile, on the Democrat side, Chairman of the County Planning and Zoning Commission, Bob Wheatley, said party politics will only hurt the county. He says his knowledge on land use makes him the perfect fit. Facilitating the economy, facilitating jobs, if it could be done with low taxes and limited government, which we've had for 40 years, then we wouldn't be talking about this. So that's not the sole answer to the issue. I have to be all updated. Also a Democrat, Dagsboro Mayor Brad Connor says his local experience makes him more responsive than the other candidates to the needs of the people in the county. This idea of party is new to me because I've always just worked for people. And in working for people, what you find out is that you get a lot of things done not worrying about what anybody, we never discuss what party it is. The people that we have in office right now are partisan to the eighth degree. The primary just a day away, debate continues to rise in Sussex County. Now once again, that debate lasted close to an hour and we will have more coverage of that debate a little later on tonight. From the Sussex County Bureau, this is Evan Kozlov for WBOC. Back to you guys. All right, Evan, thanks very much. Big day tomorrow for Delaware candidates.